It's the Weather Extreme video. This is for Thursday evening, the 29th of March, the afternoon edition. James Spann here. Uh, looks like tomorrow will be the best coverage of showers and thunderstorms in coming days. Let's get in there and take a look. We'll check some of the Skycam shots around the network this afternoon. First off, coming from Cullman where the sky is mostly cloudy. Got a few showers around in scattered pockets up there as the weather's beginning to change, the ridge breaking down a bit. That's the Fayette sky cam looking to the north at the time that image was captured. There's a pretty good rain shower up around Winfield, about 20 miles north of there. And from Trustful, northeast of Birmingham, the sky mostly cloudy with temperatures generally in the mid to upper 70s. There you go. We've got this uh, upper trough, a weakness in the ridge west of the state, and that will be easing in here tomorrow, and that's the reason we think that will be the day with the best coverage of showers and storms. But in advance of that, we actually got some showers today. That's the radar shortly after 1 o'clock, and you can see at that point it was raining right over downtown Winfield. And uh, got a few in parts of uh, Fayette and Lamar and Winston and Cullman and Blunt counties and, you know, widely scattered stuff like a summer afternoon. But, again, the coverage should be greater tomorrow. Those are midday temperatures, mostly 70s. Uh, again, some spots will probably touch 80, but uh, with the uh, showers around, uh, don't think we hit the mid-80s today. Maybe low 80s in the high end, but uh, later in the weekend, it's going to be pretty warm. In fact, Sunday might uh, offer some record warmth, as you'll see. And around the nation, southern states are warm, cold air over eastern Canada. But clearly, the warm air is going to win the battle for the next five days. Watch warning map. Not a whole lot happening around the nation. Just a few pockets of... Uh, uh, different varieties there. Uh, uh, but later today, there could be some severe weather over the nation's heartland. Uh, places like Wichita, Kansas City, St. Louis, and Omaha. Tomorrow, got a slight risk for Indianapolis and Cincinnati. And day three, which is Saturday, no formal risks. Just the 5% circles over the Rio Grande Valley of Texas and up over parts of the Corn Belt. But... Ooh, look at this. On day five, there's a severe weather risk that includes parts of West Alabama and points west. This is valid Monday, Monday night, and early Tuesday morning. And the latest guidance a little slower, suggesting we might see some rough weather mainly during the day Tuesday. But again, this early you know, timing, it's going to be hard to nail that down. Uh, and the rain for the next five days, valid through Tuesday morning at 7 o'clock. And this shows some pretty heavy amounts over southwest Mississippi. Uh, the bullseye down there below Jackson with 2.4 inches. And around here, rainfall amounts of about one inch look likely, and that would be the rain we get tomorrow, and then the rain we get maybe uh, Monday night or early Tuesday. All right, model fans, let's take a look. This is the GFS, the Global Forecast System, valid at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. You can see that little shortwave energy easing in here, and with this moist air mass, that should mean scattered to numerous showers and thunderstorms tomorrow. Uh, the high in the mid-70s, the, both the NAM and the GFS are printing 74. Uh, and again, the, the air is not cooler. It's just the fact that there'll be no sun because of the clouds and showers. And rain amounts of one half to one inch would be likely. Severe weather unlikely tomorrow. But that clearly will be the wettest day of the next uh, four. There's Saturday, and that uh, wave is on by, and uh, that looks pretty dry. Uh, Saturday should be a partly sunny day, just a small chance of a shower. The high at or just over 80. And Sunday, again, there you know, there might be a blip on radar, but most locations dry. And goodness, the, the GFS is printing 88 on Sunday, and that's April 1st. If we hit that, that will beat the old record of 86 set on April 1st, 1974. And old-timers like me know what happened a few days after that. The super outbreak of tornadoes, April 3rd, 4th, 1974. And we're not saying that's going to happen this year, but when it gets that warm in April, look out. And sure enough, here we go. This is early next week, and uh, all the runs are looking different. Uh, this is Monday, showing energy in the Texas panhandle. Down below that, the surface low is beginning to gather west of Oklahoma City. And that would suggest maybe some severe weather Monday night west of here over the Arklatex. And then Tuesday at midday, uh, that thing is uh, centered around Texarkana. Down below that, a surface low near Little Rock, and again, that would be a day in which we could very well have a severe weather outbreak. And, you know, we've seen some runs that show it Monday night. Well, now this is mainly a daytime event on Tuesday if this run is right, and we just don't know that yet. Maybe Monday night, maybe Tuesday, maybe overnight Monday night. But certainly the dynamics would support strong to severe storms. And goodness, this is April 3rd. You talk about, you know, history being on your side uh, that's a day very famous for uh, tornado activity here across the Deep South. Then we'll go to uh, 
Wednesday of next week, and you can see that the uh, shortwave trough is on by, and it's trying to phase up with this upper low to the north, and that's the big question mark. Can, can those two things phase up? And if they can, then it could turn pretty chilly here at the end of next week. Yeah, down below that, but without phasing, it'll be cooler, maybe some lingering showers, but this would not be a frost or a freeze threat. And then Thursday, a week from today, would be dry and pleasant. And it would probably be in the maybe upper 40s, but again, that would be no frost or no freeze. The really cold air is over the northeast, and it looks very cold up there. We'll go out there a few more days, April 9th. Look at that now. We've got a big, big trough over the east and a big ridge over the west, and I think this is very possible. And, of course, where this all happens, we don't know that yet, but down below that, uh, very cold air with a 540 line coming down into Kentucky and North Carolina, and that would be much cooler here. And, again, just I'm just telling you the climatology – and the overall idea of a pattern change suggests, yes, we'll probably have one more frost or freeze threat sometime in early April. We just don't know when. Uh, you, you can't be specific beyond seven days. And then the end of the forecast, April 14th, got a big trough in the west. And down below that looks kind of stormy over the Plain States. And again, some pretty good cold air over Canada, but uh, not in our case here. That would be relatively mild if this is right. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And don't forget to watch us on TV this, uh, TV, TV this evening. So like Elmer Fudd, uh, ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Uh, on the early newscast, I'll be live at the Barber Motorsports Park. They got the big indie races out there this weekend. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.